Hey, Nick, good morning. Um, I guess coming out of Sunday, what, what were maybe some of the more encouraging things you saw from an offensive standpoint? What, what, what are some things maybe you feel like you got to build on, improve going into Indy? Yeah, um, you know, watching the film yesterday uh, as a group, um, biggest thing obviously was that first half, uh, just how how locked in I feel like everyone was and the intentionality that we had uh, throughout that whole first half of just really just trying to get points on the board. Um, and finding a way to get points on the board doesn't really matter whether it was third and long or, you know, we were getting first downs pretty easily. Uh, everyone just kind of was rolling. Um, so that's definitely something to be hang our hat on and, and carry on into next week. And then obviously, you know, second half, um, needing to score more points uh, and just watching the film and, and recognizing that it was small details, you know, and, and little mistakes that kind of kind of led that to happen. Uh, Chris Harris. Nick, what do you think of when you think of the Colts? Uh, my initial thought is, you know, I enjoy playing there. I've played in that stadium several times, uh, played in college, um, played last year, had one of my first or my second touchdown there uh, in Indy, uh, had my first touchdown against Indy here. Um, so I enjoy I enjoy playing them. I know a lot of my family and, and friends uh, from Indiana. Um, our Colts fans, so it's kind of a little extra motivation to beat them. Uh, Teron? Yeah, good morning, Nick. When you talk about uh, Todd Downing, what are some of the things you like as far as the way he's been, you know, calling plays to get you guys all involved? Yeah, I feel like that. that's one, one big thing is, like, you know, spreading the wealth. Um, you know, everybody's getting targets. Um, everybody, you know, going into a game kind of knows uh, the plays that they could really, you know, light up and have a big alert for big plays um, and, and being able to call those. So I, I, I love it that, you know, he's calling those plays, but also the guys that, you know, aren't really caring who gets the credit. You know, I, like I love watching Woody go out there and just have a game. Um, and so I feel like that's one good thing about the receiver group is that, you know, Guys really don't care as long as we're moving the ball. Uh, Chris? Yeah, Nick, can you just speak to the importance of these division games and how the ones with the Colts are always, you know, so meaningful? Yeah, um, you know, the division games, you know, they, they count a little bit more. Uh, there's a little bit more weight to them because um, obviously, you know, the, the winner of the division goes to the playoffs. So it, especially against the Colts, I feel like, you know, those games are always tough. Um, tight games, you know, usually kind of like a slugfest. Um, I feel like both teams kind of have similar culture uh, built around the same things about, you know, playing hard, playing with effort, finishing. Um, so I feel like that that's kind of what creates, you know, a little bit of a, a rivalry and and leads to leads to these games, you know, being, you know, knockout, drag out games. Um, so it's, it's what we got to expect going into it, because, uh, you know, as long as I've been here, it's only been two years going on three. That's how it's always been playing them. Uh, John Lennon. John, you there? I am. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Um, Nick, apologies if you if you heard this uh, uh, already, but um, obviously uh, Derek Henry had a much bigger role in the, in the passing game uh, Sunday than than we had seen before. Um, what does that do, uh, you know, for the downfield passing game when, when Derek is an effective weapon, you know, kind of in that in the mid, short to mid range and, and also on the screens? Yeah, I feel like it, it kind of like what I touched on earlier, you know, when when you can spread the wealth and, you know, everybody's getting the ball, whether it's running, passing, um, it makes defense have to play play more honest. Um and, I, and that definitely opens up windows down the field for us and, and opportunities uh, for other guys to get the rock and light up with the ball in their hands. Uh, Corey? Hey, Nick, I was just wondering, you, since you've been here, you guys haven't been in a, in a hole like that, 0-2 to start a season or, or really kind of any point. Uh, did, did Mike change, Coach Rabel change, at all in his demeanor and his process, or was it all still exactly the same? Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't say he changed. Um, I, I definitely feel like it was the same for the most part. Uh, kind of how I, I thought of it last week was 
a reaction is healthy, uh, but a overreaction isn't. And I feel like that's just what just what happened. You know, last week there was a reaction. You know, we were had a little bit more urgency. We had more intentionality at practice. There was a little bit more pressure, but it wasn't an overreaction. Like everything uh, needed to be changed or everything was wrong. We just had to fix the things that we need to fix. Uh, Jim. You mentioned, Nick, about, you know, you're very familiar with the Colts. I mean, what, what do you know you're going to get when you face them from a defensive standpoint when, when you go out there before you even start watching film? Yeah, I mean, I feel like one of the biggest things is how, how much they compete on defense uh, all across the board, um, but especially, you know, in the secondary. And those are the guys that, that I usually go up against, um, just how they compete. And, you know, usually it's a pretty sound defense. Um, try not to give away too many big plays. Um, so we just got to be, we got to play, play our game. I say it every week, we just got to be ourselves and, you know, find ways to, to move the ball. Uh, Corey? Is Kenny Moore one of those guys you got to have your head kind of on a swivel for each week or is that just life in the NFL? Yeah, I, yeah, definitely Kenny is one of the guys. Um, you know, I feel like, Every time we've gone against him, it's one of the guys that we highlight on the defense uh, that you just kind of always see on tape, making plays, being in the right spot. Um, really physical dude, uh, really strong, great play strength. Uh, so it's definitely someone you got to keep your eye out on um, and, 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 you know, understand who you're going against and know your personnel. Because uh, if you go in there, you know, trying to block them or, you know, go in there tiptoeing, uh, they really won't end up well. Yep, how you doing, Christian? Good morning. I'm good. How you doing? Good morning. Uh, I think I think your head coach last night was talking about how maybe that was your he thought it was your best game as a Titan on Sunday. Would you agree with that? And and what do you think? Uh, what do you think he maybe did well that got his attention? Um, uh, yeah, I definitely could say. Um, well, I can agree with that. Um, but just you know, just being locked in, you know, on the call, you know, um. Just uh, making sure, you know, that everyone is communicating, you know, that we're all on the same page. I feel like we communicated well on the back end, uh, as far as everybody, including myself. Um, just being in my right gaps, you know, for the run game and covering, you know, doing my job, you know, in the past game, making sure, you know, we eliminate the guys that we wanted to and then holding up on the other guys, you know, when I had the chance. Hey, Christian, can you sit back in your chair so we can see you? Yeah. There we go. Um, John Glennon. Hey, Christian, um, I, I know you, you share some similarities with, with Caleb and the fact that, you know, both of you guys were, were high draft picks and, uh, you know, injuries kind of slowed the development early on as well. I wonder if there's anything that, that you can share with, with Caleb, you know, as he's kind of going through some struggles here, maybe either to, to either kind of keep his confidence up or, or maybe to, you know, offer some uh, advice in terms of moving forward for him in, in his situation right now. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I'm not really, you know, I can't really speak on, you know, what his process is, but I just tell him, you know, based on my experience, you know, to let him know that it is a process, you know, to get out there and get comfortable. Um, you know, some guys, you know, just have different time periods, you know, as far as when they're comfortable for themselves. So I just try to share that with him, you know, um, he'll, he'll, um, he's making progress with us, you know, every day, you know, while we're at practice. But, um, you know, once he gets those game reps, you know, that he, uh, that he will get, you know, however they play it out, you know, he, I feel like he'll be good, but I just got to let him know, you know, that it's a process. And, um, you know, like I said, the more reps he gets out there in the game, you know, he'll become comfortable. Uh, Trump. Speaking on that confidence, uh, for you, can you just kind of verbalize how important it is to have that as a cornerback and just some of the ways that you've been able to be more confident and be more comfortable as you continue to progress in your career? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you need tremendous, uh, you know, confidence as a corner and just being out there, just having the confidence to step out on the field and know you're on an island, you know, by yourself. And um, that confidence comes with being out there, you know, getting that experience. Like I said, um, the more I, the more I've been out there, the more confident I've been able to come become. And just seeing, you know, the faith that uh, my teammates, my coaches have in me, and the faith that they they tell me that they have in me, you know, that that builds confidence too. So, uh, you know, I just try to build up that and just know who I am, you know, as a player, you know, um, I know what I what I can do best and I cover guys best. And, um, you know, uh, my goal 
uh, obviously it's to win, but, you know, just put out every week, you know, that I'm one of the better corners in the league. So that continues to grow my confidence, you know, just wanting to be the best. Uh, Corey? Christian, you've had some pretty good success against some of the more bigger physical guys like DK and, and now Devontae. Well, what is it about your game that allows that, especially knowing you got a guy like Michael Pittman coming? Mm. Um, you know, just knowing the guys that I'm going against uh, and how they're going to play me because uh, they're watching film too, you know, um, just studying their tendencies and, you know, how they like to play the game. Um, all those are, uh, you know, very good receivers. So it's just on me, you know, to just lock in on what I do. I can't really, I, I you know, watch film and see what they do, but it's mainly on me. You know, I got to make sure, you know, I'm doing my technique right, you know, and playing within the defense, you know, and the plays will come, you know, to me whenever I'm on those guys. So that's the uh, main thing, you know, we're going against the guys like that. I just want to make sure, you know, I'm playing within the defense and then I can implement, you know, my, uh, my techniques on whoever. Uh, Chris Harris. Christian, aside from Pittman, they like to spread the ball around a lot, kind of like you got, you guys do a little bit. What's a, what's the challenge of a team that, you know, they have just multiple, multiple outlets for, for Matt Ryan? Um, you know, we just got to be uh, locked in. Like, we we still got to focus on the run game. You know, they're going to force, uh, you know, our safeties and us as corners to tackle. So we have to be big on the run game this week, too, not just the pass game. But like you said, they're going to implement everybody. So, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, we're coming up with a game plan, you know, that, uh, you know, help our front seven, you know, take care of that. And we can kind of focus on the back end. But uh, I know for a fact, you know, they're going to make the corners tackle in the run game. And, you know, they have uh, Hines, you know, that they use in the run and pass game. So it's going to be a, a challenge for us, like always. Uh, Sam? Christian, you, uh, you said that you get a lot of your confidence as a corner from – being put out there and having game reps and, and seeing the confidence your coaches have in you on the flip side of that, do you think it's possible to lose confidence or be a hindrance to a defensive back to not have that experience or not get those opportunities in a game? Um, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Cause this is, uh, you know, it's the NFL. I'm sure everybody comes into the league confident in their ability, but you know, once you don't like, once you don't have those reps and, you know, you're not out there and depending on whoever situation, you know, um, you know, you kind of, you can, you can lose confidence in, in, your, in yourself, but um, that's the, that's the trick, you know, uh, as a DB, you can't lose that confidence because uh, you wouldn't be here if you weren't able or capable to be out there playing the game. So, you know, you're good enough, you know, you just gotta, uh, like I said, trust in the process, you know, and, you know, you gotta come to work every day. So, you know, that you're working on your skills and, you know, you know, I, I've, hopefully one day you'll get the opportunity to uh, explain the game. So uh, it's definitely the ways that you can lose confidence, but uh, as part of our job, we got to stay with a high, high confidence. Uh, Jim? Crystal, what, what are your Tuesdays like, and uh, and how much do they help you maybe during the course of the week? Um, really, I, I still eat. Well, it's still early in the season, so my body is not uh, – not uh, accustomed to game soreness right now. So uh, I try to like just get my body back uh, under me, you know, come for Wednesday, you know, we'll be back on the practice field. Uh, so just doing things, you know, like hot tub, cold tub, you know, whatever treatment I can get. Uh, and still watching film, you know, making sure I get a uh, start early, you know, on, on the team that we're playing that week. So that's kind of, you know, what my Tuesdays are like. Uh, John Glenn. Hey, Christian, um, I, I know one of the issues that, that you guys are dealing with on, on defense is the um, uh, the X plays. I'm, I'm sure you want to cut down a little bit on them as, as you guys are, you know, watching film of the games and, and seeing those on, unfold. Are, are there some similarities, you, you know, in what you've seen from the successful X plays against you? And, and uh, you know, how can you guys go about uh, trimming those a little bit? Yeah. Uh, I feel like this week we were uh, actually pretty good, you know, as far as like a communication standpoint, you know, that we didn't have really any bus, you know, coverages. It's just, you know, guys just got to finish the play. Um, and I said this, you know, after the game, they're, they're paid to make plays too. But you know, I feel like, you know, we were in position this past week, we were in position, you know, everybody were, uh, everybody was locked in. It's just, uh, we got to come down with those plays and, um, that, that's what I'll say about the X-plays from this past game. You know, I feel like guys were there, but, you know, just got to make them. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Uh, Corey? 
Christian, um, you guys haven't been in a hole like you were last week uh, uh, very, very often. Was the head coach any different? Um, did he turn things up at all, or was he just the same old Coach Frabel last week? Uh, I mean, he was the same. He was the same guy. I wasn't at the Buffalo game, so I wasn't sure how he was, you know. Um, you know, when we uh, were down at, at half, like, that's what you're asking. But uh, he he was definitely, you know, the same guy. You know, he uh, he knows that, uh, you know, week one we got out to the lead and we weren't able to keep that lead. So he just made sure that, you know, we got the message that, you know, we got to fight for this win, you know, because they were fighting, you know, they didn't want to go on three. We didn't want to go on three. So he knew that we had to uh, keep up our uh, energy, you know, keep the momentum going, uh, just motivating us, you know, to uh, know what we're fighting for. I more specifically meant in practice. Was he the same guy in practice or was, oh, was last week amped up? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely the same guy. I mean, I feel like Coach is always the same guy. He's he's always high energy with us, you know, and um, he's always, you know, looking for the little things that we can improve on. But for the most part, he was definitely the same all week because um, he knows the type of team we are. You know, like I said, we just got to uh, execute. We just got to execute um, in the second half, which we had, we struggled with the first three weeks. Second half, I'm sorry.